Hello again, friends, brothers, sisters, everyone listening to and viewing this video. Welcome again to another video. Today's topic, we are going to be discussing the soul. Uh, I will ask for forgiveness because I will, this will probably be a little bit longer a video than perhaps I have uh, done so please forgive me you can stop it and continue listening at some other time but um, this uh, the, the soul is a little bit of a deep topic so we are gonna um, just you know try to stay focused on the main points so we can all understand what the scriptures teach and how those teachings of the scriptures measure up with the teachings of our friends the jehovah's witnesses leaders where well, actually they're not friends they are they deceive unfortunately i have no other way i say with all due respect they they deceive and this video will once again prove that except on the topic of the soul so if anything else uh if nothing else let's go ahead and get into it and again, forgive me if you're a Jehovah's Witness, if you're studying with them, I say that with all due respect. But if you view my videos, you will see the evidence that I present from the New World Translation Bible, directly from their website, as you can see that I am here once again. And I say it with all due respect because I have many, many witness friends that, that I still speak to and and talk to about different things but I've always said it I've said it before I'll say it again unless the Holy Spirit guides you you can read the scriptures you can study them like I used to study them in the Watchtower magazine at every meeting but we will not grasp the true meaning of them unless Christ sends us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And um, that's another topic as well, but we will definitely get into that. My apologies once again. Let's, let's go ahead and get into it here. Let's go to the Bible here. Now, what, what I'm going to do first is look in the glossary of this new, the New World Translation. Um, where to? Where's the glossary? Here it is. Okay, I'm gonna look up what they, how they view the soul. Okay, and the soul as far as how it's spoken of in the Bible. So let's scroll down here, and let's look for soul. There it is. Okay, now here it is, and I read. The traditional rendering of the Hebrew word nefesh and the Greek word psyche, in examining the way these terms are used in the Bible, it becomes evident that they basically refer to one people, two animals, or three, the life that a person or an animal has. And then they cite these scriptures. And I can probably imagine that these scriptures probably do uh, refer to that, to the people, animals, or the life of a person in the context of those scriptures but as you can see and we'll keep reading here they leave no room for any other interpretation of soul as it appears in the Bible and as you will see this is incorrect this is an erroneous teaching and let's continue reading. In contrast to the way that the term soul is used in many relig religious contexts, the Bible shows that both nef nefesh and psyche, uh, forgive me if I'm really tearing those words apart. I, I didn't really look up the pronunciation, forgive me. In connection with earthly creatures, refer to that which is material, tangible, visible, and mortal. In this tra translation, these original language words have most often been rendered according to their meaning in each context. 
using such terms as life, creature, person, one's whole being, or simply as a personal pronoun. For example, I for my soul. In most cases, footnotes give the alternative rendering soul. When the term soul is used either in the main text or in footnotes, it should be understood in line with the above explanation. When referring to doing something with one whole soul, it means to do it with one holds being, wholeheartedly, or with one's whole life. I agree. I agree. In some contexts, these original language words can be used to refer to the desire or appetite of a living creature. They can also refer to a dead person or a dead body. I agree. However, there are instances where this interpretation of the soul is not applicable and those are the ones that we are going to read but they have pretty much lumped everything into that one meaning this one definition so you see according to the Jehovah's Witness leaders the soul and the body are one in the same or better said the soul is never or never acts independent of the body and vice versa now this is true only when again like I said the context allows it so let's let's look at a, an example here of what I'm speaking of and how this application is not for the entire uh, when when soul is used in the Bible, let's go. Let's go to the Bible real quick, so you guys can see what I'm referring to. Let's go to Matthew chapter eleven, and we're going to go to chapter eleven, verse twenty nine. And here's Jesus speaking of the soul. Okay, let's see what it says. He says, "Take my yoke upon you and learn from me." For I am mild-tempered and lowly in heart, and you will find refreshment for yourselves. For my yoke is kindly, and my load is light. Now, where does it say soul? Okay. I think we're going to have to go in here and find it. for yourselves this is where soul would be take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am mild tempered and lowly in heart and you will find refreshment for yourselves for my yoke is kindly and my load is light this is correctly interpreted because Christ is signifying or trans translating soul as yourselves that's exactly correct but however Jesus could also be referring to the soul as resting from having to worry about legalistic spiritual works which is why he says my yoke is kindly or easy to bear pleasant why do the New World Translation Committee or Jehovah's Witness leaders translate kindly or easy to bear pleasant as kindly well that that has to that goes back to them making sure that we or should I say Jehovah's Witnesses because I no longer am a practicing one that we would occupy ourselves with spiritual works no, you can't have Christ actually saying, hey, I'm easy to bear and pleasant, you know? My load is light. No. They would constantly have us working for our salvation. But again, here they did interpret it correctly. It is yourselves. That's exactly how it should be interpreted. Because Christ was actually speaking of the body resting, the action of the body, okay? So, in this context, Jesus did speak as the soul being one and the same with the body. Now, as, as you will see later on, and this will be towards the end of the presentation today, 
we are going to look at a scripture that is clear or actually a few scriptures but the very last scripture will you you will clearly see where it's going to be speaking of us being judged outside of the body as we take our stand before Christ to be judged we will actually not be in our body and this we will get into this here near the end of the presentation let's go here to Matthew now well we're in Matthew let's go to chapter 10 now let's go ahead and get into the to the presentation a little bit more here let's go to chapter 10 verse 28 and it says here and here Christ is speaking and do not become fearful of those who killed the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in Hannah now the Jehovah's Witness leaders here interpret the soul as life prospect okay and I believe that is I'm not sure where but I know that's where that's how because that they describe it they describe the soul here kill the soul as Jesus referring to a life prospect or the prospect of living which is fine it, it's just true but he was also talking he separated okay he separated body and soul otherwise Christ could have simply said life do not become fearful of those who could kill the life in you your life because again that's working under the assumption that Christ was in line with the teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses which he was clearly not he was clearly separating the body from the soul here but again and, and there are two separate things and he described them correctly okay but let's uh, go ahead and uh, look at another scripture that continues to prove this point that the soul is actually independent of the body as well as being one with the body depending on the context but before we move on we're going to look at uh, the first uh, letter to the Thessalonians let me say this and I, I speak directly now to my dear brothers Jehovah's Witnesses, my dear sisters, friends that may be studying with them. I have gone ahead and found and researched all the New Testament scriptures that speak of the soul in the context of being apart from the body. And sadly enough, I have found that the New World Translation Committee um, or the Jehovah's Witness leaders, the governing body, discreet slave, however you want to describe them, they have deliberately changed the wording to have it fit their incorrect teaching. This is fearful. I fear for them because it's clear in Revelation it says that no one is to take away or add anything less you know what happens to you but it's sad that they would actually alter and corrupt the Holy Father's Word God's Word that is something to be seen and that is incredible but I just wanted to make that point and it's it's sad to see that people have deliberately 
altered it for their so it can fit what they want to teach not what the scriptures teach let's go to first Thessalonians and we're gonna read chapter 5 verse 23 and we're gonna keep proving that the soul is something separate and it says here may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may the spirit and soul and body of you brothers sound in every respect be preserved blameless at the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ now I believe here is what I was looking for earlier uh, and I apologize I think here it says life and I know the glossary will say um, just exactly what I what we had read is life prospect okay so you see they're saying here that this word soul here represents the word life okay so let's 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 do something here let's read it may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may the spirit and life and body of you brothers sound in every respect be preserved blameless at the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ does that make sense no because obviously you have three components here and the soul could not clearly be the life without the spirit and without the body because again Jehovah's Witnesses teach that the body and the life or the soul are one and the same now here you have Paul okay describing all three the spirit the soul and the body now let's think about it for a second here if we are to believe what the Jehovah's Witness leaders teach then Paul could have said something like or could have written something to the Thessalonians along the lines of let's see here instead of saying and may the spirit and soul in the body he could have said and may the leg head and arms of you brothers sound in every respect be preserved blameless at the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ see it doesn't make sense it does not make sense but again it's because they are the human being is comprised of these three components the spirit the soul and the body that is the person okay so now you know he if he if he if Paul was a Jehovah's Witness okay let's work under this assumption he could have simply said and written may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may the life of you brother brothers or may the lives of you brothers sound in every respect be preserved blameless at the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ so you see he could have just I mean he could have saved time and and uh, and more or less room in his letter and just called it what it was if he was a practicing Jehovah's Witness and he believed that the body soul spirit were one and the same but he did not he identified all three components of a human being had he wrote what I mentioned about mentioning the three three identifying three parts of a body leg head and arms the Thessalonians would have thought he lost his mind now it's 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 interesting but as you can see the scriptures do not lie my brothers my friends they do not lie God is not a liar the word his word is truth let's go to another scripture revelation this time Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 
says when he opened the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those slaughtered because of the word of God and because of the witness they had given. Notice the asterisk, souls, evidently referring to their lifeblood poured out at the altar. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. Because here you have John using the words those and they. See here John was describing souls because he was actually seeing people, different people, different entities, but without their bodies. That's what he was seeing. That was the vision. He was seeing our actual brothers and sisters who had died and had been slaughtered, which is why he uses the terms those and they. You see that? But let's let the scriptures continue speaking to us. Let's let God continue to speak to us, to our hearts, to our mind. Let's go to Revelation again and let's go to chapter 20. This time verse 4. And it says, And I saw thrones, and those who sat on them were given authority to judge. Yes, I saw the souls of those executed for the witness they gave about Jesus and for speaking about God and those who had not worshipped the wild beast or its image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand and they came to life and ruled as kings with Christ for a thousand years and the thousand year reign is something that we will also be getting into in a different video because that's another interesting belief that I had been taught as a Jehovah's Witness and who are these kings that are going to be reigning with Christ? We will also get into that. But let's stay on topic here. And he says, yes, I saw the souls. Here's John speaking again in a vision. He says, and I saw thrones and those who sat on them and were given authority to judge. Yes, I saw the souls. What is the souls? And it draws us back to Revelation 6, 9, which we have already or which I have already explained. So you see, John was actually seeing people, different people, but without their bodies. So, it's, um, it's quite interesting to have the Holy Spirit open my eyes to these realities of having been t taught wrong and sadly the Jehovah's Witness leaders continue to teach people wrong but as I had said there was one last scripture that I wanted to read to you that was specific in terms of us not being in the body as these souls were, they were without body. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 5, this time verse 10. Here's the Apostle Paul speaking. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of the Christ, so that each one may be repaid according to the things he has practiced while in the body, whether good or bad. Did you catch it? While in the body. We are going to be standing before the throne of Christ without a body. It does not get any clearer than that, my brothers, my sisters, and friends. It is clear 
that the soul is comprised of three components the spirit or or the 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 human a human being is comprised of three components the spirit the soul and the body thank you for listening thank you for viewing the video please share it with friends family members especially especially if they're Jehovah's Witnesses I know they perhaps may not even want to view it but my dear brothers this is life and death and you like I am sure you want to live and have God's approval thank you for listening and I will see you or we will speak about another topic tomorrow. May God bless you.